Hello and welcome back to our Think and Grow Rich series where we focus on 31 major causes of failure according to Napoleon Hill in his timeless classic Think and Grow Rich. So we're going to be talking about the fifth point which is lack of self-discipline. <clears throat> Discipline comes through self-control. This means that one must control all negative qualities. Before you can control conditions, you must first control yourself. Self-mastery is the hardest job you will ever tackle. If you do not conquer self, you will be conquered by self. You may see at one in the same time, both your best friend and your greatest enemy by stepping in front of a mirror. This to me was quite significant because um, part and parcel of your success is your own determination of how you go about things. Not, it's easy to blame circumstances around you events around you even people around you but the last person that we will ever point to find fault with is ourselves and lack or a failure of recognizing ourselves as part of the problem of our lives our performance in work in school, in our own run or managed businesses is ourselves. So that for me hit home. I've never really had a problem with self-discipline because um, how I grew up, the type of household, like I said, like that my parents ran and also in terms of like the education system that I was in, self-discipline was something that was a big a major deal so let's first break this down by talking defining what self-discipline is and according to um i think this is oxford dictionary it is the ability to control one's feelings and overcome one's weaknesses the ability to pursue what one thinks is right despite temptations to abandon it. Let's go back. The ability to pursue what one's, one thinks is right despite temptations to abandon it. So some of the things that can be or a thing that can be appear as a temptation or cause a temptation to abandon whatever you think is right is challenge is difficulty so we have to rise above the difficulty we have to address the challenges head on and not run away from them let's see another definition here that i'll pull up is according to the merriam webster dictionary is self-discipline is correction or regulation of oneself for the sake of improvement let me read that one more time correction or regulation of oneself for the sake of improvement so self-discipline is a virtue it's a virtuous trait it's a good word it's i used to think it was a hard word because mastering the ability to push yourself to become better is quite challenging like for example when you think about let's say you want to lose weight right you have to work out and sometimes working out first of all carving out time to work out big deal where does that come from we have to sacrifice something that we love we have to not we have to add or squeeze in more to our day for example like you want to rest you've had a lo hard long day you still have to overcome being tired you have to overcome being sleepy and put in that time to work out on top of that the exercises themselves can be can have such a great physical 
exertion on your body that you're not ready for and even if you go through with it like one time you can be like hey man that was too much work that was too much time it was just hard all around and you're like yeah i don't think i'm cut out for this this is not for me and you give yourself an excuse like at least i tried and then like you completely forget about it changing our diet another example you know you need to eat healthy but then you're so addicted to eating out or eating meals that aren't like carefully prepared carefully thought out that will balance everything that you need they will balance can i say balance your metabolism let me say that word that will be good for your mind good fuel for your mind and so on and so forth another example making your bed in the morning or making your bed at least every day doing your laundry and i know i'm giving everyday examples but the thing is that charity begins at home the habits that we have around ourselves or around us on a day-to-day basis if we don't master if we don't discipline ourselves around our in immediate environment like our body our oral hygiene our bodily hygiene our like how we keep the rooms and the spaces that we occupy and that we live in and that we use to create that we use to study that we use to better ourselves professionally if everything is just scattered disorganized if there's just like a lot of things that you have like you're hoarding and that you're not like going through what you need what you don't need what is old what is new and stuff like that that can it blocks your mind and when you block your mind you're not able to now to use the energy that you have with a clean mind to get clarity so that you can express your ideas and that you can transform your ideas into real things such as products services and so on and so forth right um another point that i had is that um from the oxford dictionary is the ability to control one's feeling and overcome one's weaknesses we should all take note of what our weaknesses are and not ignore them and just say oh that's part of my personality it's some things are okay they're not part of our personality but because we are running away from addressing them we we graft them into who we are and the reality is that mm, it's not really who you are it's like what you choose to refuse to do or what you choose to allow to happen in your life so like if i give an example of myself like in the past <laughs> i was a big procrastinator and i had my own re- reasons for maybe procrastination and they were mostly because of fear like fear that i wasn't intelligent enough to write a good report or i wasn't intelligent enough to write a good article so i would like over consume information and say yeah i'll get to it after i finished consuming this information and it would take me such a long time to get to my deadline and i'd find myself like pulling all nighters like 24 hours 36 hours 72 hours when i had like maybe like a week or two weeks to prepare this thing but i let my insecurities about like my intellect you know i let them have the best of me another example of why i was procrastinating sometimes fear um like there were some situations where i had to do something i had to pursue something for my own good but then to do so i needed permission or i needed assistance in some way shape or form from somebody who wasn't particularly like a pleasant person to deal with or an easy person to deal with and i was just so afraid of like 
asking that person for help because I knew like sometimes they were in a bad mood and if I asked them for help I would be the uh, like a target dumping ground for all the emotional issues and I didn't want that it wasn't because I was like preserving preserving my emotional health it's not that that's what I was doing it was more because I was afraid of dealing with that person and quite frankly their nonsense and I will say I won't be too hard on myself because that person was in a position of seniority over me so there wasn't much that I could do but now when I think back and now that I am an older person what I will say is that I am bold enough to now learn from my mistakes and say no I don't care what this person is dealing with I don't care about their emotions I don't care about how they will hurt my feelings I need this and that to happen so I'm going to ask them regardless of their feelings or whatever reaction that they will have so timidity was did not work in my favor so let us from for myself what i will say is that i have to learn how to be bold and ask for the things that i want regardless of who the person i am asking it from regardless of their status in life or the role or position that they play in my life I have to stop being insecure about the type of intellect that I have, the type of skill set that I have, and just do the thing anyways, because I will learn as time goes by. I am a keen learner. I am a keen student. So I should highlight my positives and look at myself in the mirror and give myself like a really tough talk and say, hey, cut it out. So from this lack of self-discipline, what encouragement can I give? I will say, let us learn how to be bold and honest with ourselves. We have to be vulnerable and vulnerability means like putting your defenses down and looking at ourselves, putting your defenses down and being open to attack or criticism and stuff like that. But we have to be vulnerable with ourselves more than we are with other people. And when we are vulnerable with ourselves, we are able to be honest with ourselves. So we write down or we make note of all our weaknesses that we have. Not to put us down, but in a way to build us up so that we can work on these things that are standing in the way of our progress, that are standing in the way of our success. So how do we go about this? Once we have taken note of our weaknesses, we start with small steps. There are some people who are good at going cold turkey and just blasting through, blasting through their issues and trying to um, strengthen themselves and good for them but for those of us who can't go cold turkey let's take baby steps and in our baby steps let's not fall back because of wanting to be perfect allow yourself to make mistakes as you work on yourself little by little you will be there there used to be this song that we used to sing in our school and it was it goes like this if you can't climb a mountain then climb a hill that's much better than standing still there's a way if you've got the will and little by little you're there good things that are here to stay don't get done in just one day once you start you're on your way so keep on going if you can't climb a mountain then climb a hill that's much better than standing still there's a way if you've got the will and little by little little by little you you'll be there little by little you're there Okay, guys, until next time, that's it for me. Have a good one. Bye.